Good evening, my friends. Tonight, we're setting sail on a journey that dances on the delicate threads of our most enigmatic organ, the brain. Imagine, if you will, a tapestry woven with tales of human oddities, cognitive wonders, and emotional depths. Stories so profound they mirror fiction. Yet, they are rooted in the very essence of what it means to be human. This is the realm of Dr. Oliver Sacks, a man who found the world contained within the folds of the cerebral cortex. Our thoughts, our feelings, our very identities rest upon the soft, pulsing tissue inside our skulls. It's a philosophical landscape as vast as any universe, with each mind a realm unto itself, a swirling nebula of neurons and synapses sharing silent secrets. Within this complex terrain, Dr. Sachs mapped the human condition with the precision of a cartographer and the empathy of a confidant, translating the language of the brain for all of us to marvel and understand. What is it that makes you you? A question as simple as it is complex, as personal as it is universal. As we journey through the cavernous halls of our own minds, guided by the lantern of Sachs's insights, we come face to face with this central query. How do the intricacies of the brain contribute to the vast tapestry that is the human experience? With a masterful hand, Oliver Sacks dipped his quill into the inkwell of neurology, scripting narratives that brought abstract medical cases to life. Much like an alchemist transforms lead into gold, Sacks turned clinical histories into golden tales of triumph and sorrow, courage and despair. His stories resonated because they were our stories, testaments to the resilience and fragility of the human spirit. Each patient was a universe of experience, a reflection on the profound question, what indeed does it mean to be human in the face of neurological diversity? In the pages of The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat, we met individuals whose realities were different from what most could fathom. Yet Sachs illuminated these lives with a warmth that bridged the gap between the familiar and the foreign. The man who could not recognize faces, the woman who felt perpetually disconnected from her own body, these weren't mere case studies. They were individuals with narratives deserving of compassion and empathy. But where, you might ask, does opinion come into play amid the stark lines of neurological facts? Sachs brought forth views from both past and present thinkers, weighing the mind as a biological entity against the mind as a fountain of metaphysical essence. He resonated with Wittgenstein's proposition that the human body is the best picture of the human soul, bringing the wisdom of philosophers into the examination room. Then there was the patient, Jose, who Sachs recounted in his work, A Leg to Stand On. Following an injury, Jose's disconnect from his own leg posed a philosophical conundrum about body image and the self. By interweaving Jose's narrative with reflections on his own experiences and quotes like William James' assertion that our view of the world is truly shaped by what we decide to hear, Sachs proved the brain's power in painting our reality. Historical parallels emerged in Sachs' studies, like the narratives from survivors of encephalitis lethargica, which he chronicled in Awakenings. Drawing comparisons to the loss and rebirth experienced during and after the Great Wars, he showcased the human capability for renewal, highlighting the philosophical debates about consciousness and the ethics of medical intervention. This work, much like the historical case of Phineas Gage, prompted introspection on the interplay between neurological change and personal identity. But the ethical implications were far-reaching. The choices Sachs and his contemporaries faced in treating these conditions often delved into realms of moral philosophy. When does correcting a neurological aberration erase something intrinsically human? When does intervention cross from treatment into transformation? These were the questions Sachs grappled with and in turn asked us to ponder. His narratives found cultural echo in art and literature, like the protagonists of novels whose journeys mirrored the very struggles experienced by patients with neurological disorders. Dostoevsky's characters grappled with the nature of reality and identity, much in the vein of Sachs' own patients. 
The sense of dissociation found in Kafka's works spoke to the alienation that could accompany abnormal brain function. Music, a recurring theme in Sachs' stories, was both a healing mechanism and a reflection of the brain's patterns. Contemporary discussions in neuroscience and philosophy continue to explore the terrain that Sachs once trekked. With the advent of neuroimaging and artificial intelligence, debates rage about the quantifiable essence of thoughts and feelings, topics that would have both enthralled and challenged Sachs. He implored us to engage with these dialogues, to question the relationship between the brain's wiring and the narratives of our lives. As we grapple with advancements in technology and neuroscience, understanding the human mind becomes ever more crucial. Sachs's work sheds light on the importance of seeing patients, seeing ourselves not as mere diagnoses, but as complex stories, each one an entire world. In bringing together the insights from Sachs' journey, we find a powerful synthesis. It is in the understanding and recognition of our neurological narratives that we truly encounter the vastness of the human condition. Such understanding asks not only for scientific curiosity, but also, perhaps more importantly, for a profound sense of empathy. I thank you, my friends, for embarking on this exploration with me, for delving into the wonders and oddities of the human mind as unveiled by Oliver Sacks. I leave you with this. How do the unique patterns of our brains color the stories of who we are? And how do these stories, in turn, shape the fabric of our shared human tapestry? As we close this chapter, I encourage you to carry the spirit of inquiry with you. Look within, look around, and ask yourself, what's your story? How does it weave into the grand narrative of human existence? Until next time, may your mind's eye remain clear, your heart open, and your sense of wonder ever present. Good night, and keep questioning, keep learning, 